CTV's W5. I am not agreeing to that. There's no way. When you pay good money, but get bad service. It's like all clogged up in here. I'm angry. You know, this isn't the first time this has happened. Taking advantage of somebody who's in need is absolutely criminal. And a flawed system seems ineffective. Outside, we just have outside. a couple questions. I don't care. Outside. Which outside, never seemed to happen. Please. I was pretty pissed off. It made me angry. We don't have any proof that the complaint was answered. Where can you turn for help? Do you think they're even doing their job as watchdogs? No. Here is Avery Haynes. Welcome to W5. Every year, tens of thousands of Canadians complain about lousy service and poor quality products to the Better Business Bureau. W5 investigates the repeat offenders, companies with some of the highest number of unhappy customers year after year. John Woodward begins our Cross Canada investigation. A broken fridge is a hassle, but for Laura Snyder, it couldn't have come at a worse time. It followed two tragedies in the summer of 2022. First, her mom Linda died in June. Then, just six days later, Mark, her husband of 37 years, passed away suddenly. I had received a, a lot of um, frozen entrees from family and friends, and I had it all in the freezer. With all that food, the last thing she needed was for her fridge to stop working. So all of that was lost when the fridge broke down and it all thawed and so it couldn't be refrozen. And This uh, is food your friends and family cooked to help you get through that yeah, tough time. Yeah. That's heartbreaking. Yeah. I uh, didn't know what to do. I, it was my kind of first home thing that happened and wasn't sure what to do. And... All I could think about was, you know, I need to get it fixed and need to get it fixed quickly. And, and your husband wasn't there. He was the guy who would have normally helped here. He would have. On her own for the first time, Laura turned to Google. How did you find this company and kind of show me as you're doing it? Appliance repair. Just put that into Google and it's the first one that popped up. Right there, number yeah. one. Yep. Laura was relieved when A-Team Appliance Repair said they could come in a few hours and they quickly diagnosed the problem. He said, oh, it's your compressor. And I was like, oh, okay, and you know, how much is that gonna cost? And so he wrote up the quote and said it would be uh, just under $2,000 to repair. So I was a bit shocked. I was not expecting it to be quite that much. Um, $2,000 is quite a bit. Yeah. $2,000 to fix a fridge that was only worth about the same amount. And I asked the young man, I said, if I was your mom, like, what would you advise your mom to do? And he told me that he would, you know, advise to fix it. And he said he could fix it within the next day or two. I was like, perfect. He's the expert on the, the, the refrigerator, not me. The so. technician told Laura he needed a deposit of $1,200, cash only. But her debit limit only allowed $1,000, so he took that. And that's the last time she saw the technician. After three weeks of delays and unanswered phone calls, she decided to cancel the repair and ask for her money back. I explained to her that my mom had passed away and my husband had just passed away and there was a lot of things going on. And, and she said, well, if you're going to make me feel guilty and change my mind, she says it's not going to work. In the end, she says the woman on the phone offered to give her a little over $400, even though they never repaired her fridge. But there was one condition. You'll have to uh, do a verbal agreement that this will end the contract and you won't take this any further. Take this any further, meaning? Court, Better Business Bureau. And I said, absolutely not. I am not agreeing to that. There is no way. Laura turned down the money and complained to the Better Business Bureau. What happens when somebody reaches out and says, I've had a terrible experience? We would take that complaint to the company and say, this is your customer. They have this complaint. You know, this is the resolution they're seeking. Melanie McGovern is the national spokesperson for the consumer watchdog that's been keeping a close eye on businesses for more than 100 years. And she says A-Team Appliance Repair comes up a lot. By the fall of 2023, almost 600 unresolved complaints in Ontario in the last three years, causing the BBB to issue this special alert. 
So in many cases, the repair suggested to the consumer is ineffective or the appliance is still not in working order, even though they've been paid. But A-Team Appliance Repair has never replied to Laura's or many other Better Business Bureau complaints. In fact, according to the Bureau, they're the worst company in Ontario for answering and solving BBB complaints, earning them the lowest grade possible, an F. If a company has an F rating, it means they've been unresponsive to BBB's requests for information, they've been unresponsive to consumer complaints, or they just refuse to resolve those complaints. W5 asked McGovern for a list of the BBB's repeat offenders, companies like A-Team that have a history of not answering or solving consumer complaints. The list from the fall of 2023 included a range from airlines to gift basket sellers to credit companies. We investigated how these companies operate in Canada and whether there are any consequences to ignoring consumer complaints. Beginning with a test house to see what we could uncover about A-Team appliance repair. First, we brought in Adele Genutinov, a technician from a reputable repair company with an a rating at the BBB. He checked the fridge to make sure it was working perfectly. Just to access the back panel. And then he created an easy to find and fix problem, attaching a zip tie that would hit the fan. And then the technician should be able to see it straight away. So that really is a very simple fix. That's correct. The Technician just simply need to cut the zip tie, remove it, and put the cover back. And how long would that take? Five minutes. Yeah, how much would you charge for something like that? I would rather charge a customer the diagnostics fee only, um, $90. Posing as a homeowner, we called A-Team, telling them about the strange sound coming from the fridge. They told us the charge would be about $80. Hi, how are you? Did you a yes, great, come in. When the technician arrived, we captured what happened with hidden cameras and watched with expert technician Adele. He's pulling back the same panel you did. Yep. Let me just show you. It's like all clogged up in here. Oh, okay. So I would have to open the motor and need to service it. Okay, he's opening now the control board compartment, which is absolutely unnecessary. This is, you didn't even touch this panel. No, that's where the control board is located. So he's been to that back panel twice. He's now had two opportunities to see the simple problem with the fridge. Is it possible that a qualified technician could have missed it? No, no way. After about 20 minutes, the technician called over our fake homeowner with his verdict, and we were surprised by what we heard. I fixed your uh, fan motor because the relay oh, the was motor. stuck, so now there is proper voltage coming into the relay, and the pushing of the motor was making noise. Is that what that fridge needs? No, it's absolutely fine. Just to remove the hindrance and that's it. Wow. And that's exactly what he did. Just move the zip tie out of the way but he charged to fix the fan motor, which cost... 290 plus 13 person. Almost $330, making this the most expensive zip tie Adele has ever seen. See you. That fridge was fixed, but Laura's wasn't, and she hasn't received any money back. My next step was then to go to the consumer services, and these are the emails that I sent off to them. After contacting the BBB, she filed a complaint with a branch of the Ontario government, Consumer Protection Ontario. With a mandate to enforce consumer laws and investigate violations, she expected big results, but... So when they came back and just said that, you know, they reached out for a comment and the company didn't respond, so you're on your own. Do you think they're even doing their job as watchdogs? No. No, this company a year later is still in existence. Once again, A-Team ignores another complaint. And Laura isn't the first to warn Consumer Protection Ontario about A-Team. In fact, according to a Freedom of Information request, W5 uncovered that since 2019, over 550 people called and complained about A-Team, disputing over $200,000 worth of business. They've even been on their consumer beware list since 2022. What good is this list in that situation? 
it's worthless. Consumer Protection Ontario declined W5's request for an interview, issuing a statement that said, in part, the ministry does not have the authority under the Consumer Protection Act to force a business to cease operations. W5 sent two letters to A-Team requesting an interview, and they ignored both. Hello? So we called their director, Chen Kuchavi. I will send a response. I got your call today. I told you I would yeah. respond. I respectfully ask from you not to contact us anymore. And he ended the conversation with a threat. If you don't use anything from this conversation, I'm going to sue you. That was the last time we heard from Chen, so we tried to track him down at his office in Markham, Ontario, north of Toronto. I'm John from CTV News. John from I'm John. Not we, we just have a couple questions for you. We just have a couple questions for you about repairs that were paid for but never seem to happen. Outside, please. Outside. We just have a few questions for you. Can we please talk to you about this? Sure, but not in here. 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 Can we arrange something with you now? What would you like? We would like to do an interview about some repairs that okay. were paid for, but never seemed to happen. Okay, well, call us in and we'll schedule an interview. We've that done that. Good. We've tried okay. calling. You've rejected us then. Laura Snyder never heard back from A-Team either. Already out $1,000, she had to fork out even more money for a new fridge. If she could go back in time, Laura says she would have done things differently and checked out that company on the BBB website. So at the end of all this, where does it leave you? I don't want to be taken advantage of again. I won't fall prey to this again for sure. Read the reviews. If I would have read the reviews, it was very clear that this was not a reputable company. When we come back. It is incredibly difficult to enforce passenger rights. Discouraged travelers fight for fair treatment. It could be years before you get your case heard. When W5 continues. I'm Melanie Nagy in British Columbia on the hunt for Canadian companies that are the worst at answering or solving consumer complaints to the Better Business Bureau. Airlines have some of the lowest BBB ratings in the country, everything from a D- minus to an F, which comes as no surprise to frustrated passengers. When we were on the way to the airport, we got a notification saying it would be delayed. The flight was delayed six hours. Also, my luggage is still in Toronto. Airlines are under no obligation to answer BBB complaints. The Canadian Transportation Agency has a process, but you better have a lot of patience. They had a massive backlog of over 60,000 claims and a year and a half wait for a complaint to be investigated. One exception is WestJet, which gets hundreds of complaints, but because they tried to solve them, they got a B-. Still delays and poor service are just par for the course, say passengers stuck waiting for flights. So I was delayed like four times, so I was supposed to leave at 8.30 last night, and then I got bumped to midnight, then to 6 a.m. this morning, and then to now 1.30. And in this email here, it'll show you that the reason for the delay was due to crew availability. Rob and Adrienne McNabb know all too well the frustrations of flying. They live in Royston, B.C., about three hours north of Victoria, but say delays and cancellations by airlines sometimes leave them stranded. Their trip to Florida back in 2020 was the last straw. On their way back home, they heard that all too familiar announcement from Air Canada, a company with over 500 unresolved BBB complaints in the last three years. Their flight was delayed. And what he said in addition was that because it was weather related, having to de-ice the plane, there would be no accommodations for passengers arriving in Vancouver making connections. So that meant that, you know, if we missed our connection, which we ultimately did, We'd have to rent a hotel and added expenses. How are you feeling? What, what's running through your mind? I'm angry. You know, this isn't the first time this has happened with this airline or any other airline for that matter. 
Rob says the situation got even more ridiculous when the gate agent told him where the plane was being de-iced. The plane had to be de-iced in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo, are we talking Sao Paulo, Brazil? I go on to the internet and go on the weather app and pull up Sao Paulo, and I find this, that the temperature at that day was 20 Celsius. Wow. So de-icing doesn't wash. When Rob and his family finally arrived back home, he complained to Air Canada. Did you have to email this to them? I did. I did, did you ever hear anything back from this? Denied. Air Canada said the delay was outside of their control, so no compensation. But they also changed their story. The delay wasn't weather related, now it was caused by scheduling issues. In a statement to W5, Air Canada said that's not unusual because when they do an investigation, the reason for a delay's true cause may take longer to determine. We are joined by Air Passenger Rights advocate Gabor Lukacs, founder of Air Passenger Rights. What are your rights when you do feel that you've experienced discrimination? Air Passenger Rights advocate Gabor Lukacs has been a thorn in the side of the Canadian airline industry for over a decade. What troubles me the most is that airlines are forcing passengers to get on the plane or less they lose their money. Not only is he an outspoken critic of airlines, but he runs an air passenger rights website and a Facebook group with almost 150,000 members. And he tries to help passengers like Rob by complaining to the Canadian Transportation Agency whenever he sees an airline policy that he says violates government regulations. In 2008, I began to embark on this complaint by complaint uh, airline by airline approach to deal with what airlines have been doing, how the airlines have been just breaking the law systematically and refusing to obey what has already been set out in the law. Nothing special, just do whatever is in the law. Gabor says many of his complaints were successful in changing airline policies. Today marks a milestone for air travel in Canada. But more help was on the way for passengers like Rob, in 2019, the head of the Canadian Transportation Agency, Scott Striner, along with the Minister of Transportation, Mark Garneau, We've been working on this for a very, very long time. Announced the Federal Air Passenger Protection Regulations, or APPR. With this in place, Rob had somewhere to go with his denied claim from Air Canada. In fact, according to the APPR, each member of his family could be entitled to $1,000 if the arrival of the passenger's flight is delayed by nine hours or more. They are only protecting passengers in name. But Gabor says the Canadian Transportation Agency's enforcement of the APPR has been an abysmal failure. They are written in such a way that it is incredibly difficult to enforce passenger rights. Incredibly difficult to enforce because in order for Rob to get compensation, he has to prove his flight wasn't delayed by weather or scheduling issues. He only qualifies for reimbursement for reasons within the carrier's control. But Gabor claims that airlines exploit that policy. The most blatant example is crew shortage, the airlines own employees shortage. They claim it's outside their control. The airline sold the ticket, they knew how many employees they will have. All this is predictable, but then they have the arrogance to tell passengers that a flight cancellation due to uh, crew shortage is actually something outside the airline's control. Gabor would like to see a system similar to Europe's, where he says the rules are so strict and fines for breaking them so high, airlines go to great lengths to avoid delaying passengers. The airline has to have backup pilots, backup crew members, backup planes, everything. They have to have reasonable backups. You do have some maintenance issue with aircraft. You have to have backups. So what those air passenger protection regulations should do and do in, in Europe is they put a dollar value on passengers' time. But in Canada, even travelers' complaints about airlines often don't get solved very quickly. Remember that backlog at the Canadian Transportation Agency? Over 60,000 claims and a year and a half wait? There's supposed to be a process that people are able to follow now. Why didn't you choose that option? It could be years before you get your case heard. Typically, uh, they are... Um, they find more in favor of the airline. So I felt that a more 
fair um, opportunity to get justice is through the courts. Yes, so where it says evidence number whatever, I yeah. would have a corresponding document to uh, substantiate. Rob filed a claim with BC's Civil Resolution Tribunal, hoping they'd have better luck enforcing the federal passenger protection rules. At first, Air Canada tried to settle, offering travel vouchers for Rob and his wife, but nothing for their son, who was also on the trip. And at this point, I said, no, no, no. We're, we're in this together. He was affected much more than we were because this holiday was for him. And uh, so I said, no, I'll, I'll take this to uh, tribunal. And that's where we went. In the end, the tribunal found that the plane didn't need de-icing in Sao Paulo, but was delayed in Montreal due to de-icing. However, the delay for scheduling issues was within Air Canada's control. Here we go, this is the one. I order Air Canada to pay Robert McNabb, Adrian McNabb, Jonathan McNabb. Then it breaks down the total there, a total of $3,159. It was very gratifying and uh, I felt good that uh, the little guy can stand up to the big corporation. And the next time Rob got delayed by another airline, he went back to the tribunal and successfully settled two cases with WestJet, but he had to sign a non-disclosure agreement so he can't talk about them. Absolutely no. Do not ever sign a settlement agreement or a release that contains a gag order. Gabor worries that gag orders could stop people from finding out that sometimes airlines have to compensate passengers. Settlements are a good thing. The law says they have to pay anyway. So they cannot say we are going to pay you only if you give us a release. You can say no, you have to pay me anyway. Yeah, Rob, this is the uh, letter that, Air, that WestJet sent us. But Rob can talk about his Air Canada case, and word has gotten around. Now friends and family come to him for advice when they've had delayed or cancelled flights, and he helps them take their claims to the tribunal. And if they fail to respond, which is good for you, then it becomes a default judgment. And were you successful with those? Yes, they were successful in all four cases. That success gives Rob a sense of vindication, but Air Canada still has among the highest number of unresolved BBB complaints in the country. W5 requested an interview with the airline. They declined, but in a statement said, Air Canada wholly reject the suggestions of some critics that we avoid compensating customers, adding the transportation agency conducts frequent spot checks of our APPR handling and has made no findings that we avoid our obligations. But when W5 looked at the latest annual report from the transportation agency, we found a different story. Air Canada was ordered to pay $77,000 to 117 passengers previously denied compensation, on top of 13,400 in penalties for 67 instances of non-compliance with the air passenger rules. In terms of court cases, Air Canada says since 2020 they received 11 judgments requiring us to pay additional compensation to passengers that is less than three per year, whereas we transported more than 40 million passengers last year. Minister, do you find flying pleasurable these days? Flying pleasurable? I never find flying pleasurable. I'm afraid of flying. <laughs> the Honourable Pablo Rodriguez is the current Minister of Transportation. He's responsible for making sure federal officials at the Canadian Transportation Agency, or CTA, enforce the passenger rights rules. And Minister, W5 spoke with passengers who feel that there are so many loopholes in the APPR that the only way they can get compensation is to take airlines to court. Why do you think passengers have so little faith in the APPR? Well, we're fixing that, actually. As you know, Melanie, we invested $75 millions extra to make sure that the CTA could uh, add 200 employees to accelerate the claims. And we also made sure that there was like one-stop shop before people would have to go to one place and that person was sent elsewhere, etc. It's gonna be one person for one claim. So it should accelerate stuff. Minister Rodriguez hopes accelerating the process will help clear up that 60,000 complaint backlog and year and a half wait. I feel the frustration and we're, we're working hard to improve things. 
What timelines are we looking at? I mean, 40 million passengers flew with Air Canada last year. Millions are going to go through, you know, the next year. Like, when are things going to get better? The first thing I did, I've been a minister for a few months now, is meet with all the big uh, airline companies because there's a clear problem there. I've also tabled a bill in the House, which is C-52, which sets service standards. The companies will know what is expected from them. Minister Rodriguez believes his new Air Transportation Accountability Act will improve service in Canada. But Rob McNabb says it's the airlines that need to do better. If you had a message for Air Canada here today, if you had a representative or some head of Air Canada standing before you, what would you say to Air Canada? Shame, shame, shame. We've entered into contracts in good faith and you have let us down. Coming up. I have no idea how my information would have gone to this company. How questionable businesses stay in the game. So it's all fake. They're all fake. When W5 continues. I'm Bill Fortier in Alberta with a company that has one of the highest number of Better Business Bureau complaints in the province. By the fall of 2023, credit value had more than 200 unanswered or unresolved Better Business Bureau complaints from across Canada in the past three years. What the company actually does is a bit of a mystery. On their website, they say they help clients build their credit score to create more financing opportunities. But many customers W5 spoke to say they were looking for quick and easy loans online, like the ones credit value advertised on Google, with no credit check and 100% approval guarantees. Artist and preschool teacher Dina Indorado says she's been stung by credit value. Were you in a difficult situation financially? I live paycheck to paycheck when I do have a paycheck. I'm going to tell you the truth because it's very difficult in these times to find a job that can satisfy all the financial needs that someone has. To make matters worse, in June, Dina was shocked to discover weekly deductions coming out of her already depleted bank account. But because it was $18.99, I honestly, it just, I, I'm like, okay, $18.99 is not that bad. But who are these credit, who's this credit value company? What, what do they do? I have no idea what they do. So um, I'm, I'm freaking out, actually. I'm like in, in total panic. Dina says she's never heard of credit value, but this is key. She does admit to going online looking for a loan. I do remember um, looking into small credit loans and things like that, but I have no idea how um, my information would have gone to this um, company. Even so, money kept coming out of Dina's account. By September 2023, more than $280 gone. Then she found complaints online about credit value. On the Better Business Bureau website, hundreds of people, some say they were charged thousands of dollars for credit counseling services, something Dina says she never even agreed to. And just to be absolutely clear, did you ever receive any credit counseling from this company? No, absolutely not. We Googled credit value. W5 wanted to find out how Dina ended up getting billed for credit counseling, so producer Kevin O'Keefe and I did a little digging. So sort of hidden on Credit Value's website are these glowing positive reviews or testimonials from people about you know, how well Credit Value has done for them. But they're associated with these names and pictures, wow. and if you do a reverse image search... He's everywhere. These are stock photos. They're all over the internet, right? And on a different company's website that we found is linked to credit value, we found the exact same testimonials, but associated with completely different names. So it's all fake. They're all fake, right. Well, funny, Dina said she never went on the credit value website, but she does admit going online looking for a loan. And credit value runs tons of Google ads looking for loans like this. And these ads are clearly uh, targeting people who are, you know, in pretty desperate need of yeah. money quick. No credit check. $1,000 now. Yeah. So you click on it. You think you're getting, filling out an application for a loan. So you fill out the application. You click submit. You think you applied for a loan. Actually, you just applied for credit counseling, which costs $18.99 a week. $18.99, the exact amount Dina was being charged, according to the fine print on the website, for credit counseling. W5 reached out to Credit Value for an interview multiple times. 
We wanted to know why they advertise for loans when it appeared they don't even offer them. The first email was sent on September 13th. That same day, the company took down its Google ads for loans. A few days later, Credit Value replied saying the company couldn't talk because, in accordance with our privacy policy, we are unable to discuss specifics of any complaint or individual case. So who is Credit Value? W5 tracked down their corporate records. It turns out they're owned by Riverpack Limited, a company with links to several Calgary addresses. We quickly discover Riverpack Limited doesn't seem to have their own office. It looks like they rent co-working spaces in different buildings. So these are just people who work for various different companies that rent space in these offices? Is that how it works? Okay. And you've never heard of Riverpack Limited or Credit Value? Credit Value also claimed to have an office at this downtown co-working space. We're with uh, CTVW5. We're actually doing a story on, uh, on their company. So, yeah, we're looking for them. Yeah, okay, thank you anyways. Sorry to bug you. Thank you. Thank you. But no sign of them here until we find the office manager. Do you know where their office is? Uh, it's over there, but I can't let you in. Oh, okay. Is there anybody there, do you know? Okay, thank you very much. Do they do work out of here, though? Yeah. Okay. But shortly after she told us they had an office here, she asked us to leave, citing privacy concerns of other businesses. Later that day, we did hear from Credit Value's lawyer, Faizen M. Butt. And which firm are you with? Which legal firm? I'm from uh, District 5 Law. We'd like an explanation from Credit Value about why hundreds of people are complaining that they're being charged for something they never agreed to and never received. I will get on this. I will seek instructions from my client and, uh, uh, and I will get back to you. A couple hours after that call, he sent a statement claiming that the allegations you have sought an interview for appear to be entirely without merit. Every customer provided their banking information to credit value in exchange for the services received. So yeah, why don't you just go back into this email and just tell me again what we're looking at here. So here we're looking at um, an email. After W5, credit value emailed Dina warning her that unfounded accusations might lead to severe legal implications. Attaching this contract for credit counseling that they claim she agreed to. W5 wanted to know how credit value can freely advertise for loans when Google has stringent rules around loan ads and how credit value can even advertise for credit counseling when the search engine doesn't allow ads for credit repair services. W5 emailed Google asking about their advertising policies. Google's response was swift and severe, telling W5 they closed Credit Value's profile, saying, we have removed the ads that violated our policies and taken action against an associated advertiser account. I don't know how to, how to say that, I was frozen. Even with the Google ads gone, former customers like Dina are still out money. So she complained directly to her bank. Not only did they cancel the withdrawals, but made credit value return her money. But not everyone was as lucky. I hope and I wish that um, every single person who has been scammed out of their money receives every single penny back and, uh, and more. Because being taken advantage of like that um, can also leave you with uh, emotional distress. And taking advantage of somebody who's in need is absolutely criminal, absolutely. Up next, we need to ensure that consumers are protected first and foremost. Can bad companies buy good reputations? Try to stop these kinds of scams before they start. When W5 continues. From beer and wine to chocolate truffles, the gourmet gift baskets at Hazelton's look too good to be true. And maybe they are. I'm John Woodward here in Toronto. According to the Better Business Bureau, the Gift Group owns Hazelton's, along with dozens of other gift basket companies. And by the fall of 2023, they'd racked up over 250 unanswered and unresolved consumer complaints in three years, along with an F from the BBB. But you hadn't opened it yet. You said you just wanted to admire it for a while. But that admiration quickly turned to disappointment when Alia Griffin's stepsister Emily opened the gift basket she ordered for her birthday. It was her 40th birthday. It was a big deal. 
I wanted to make sure since it was her 40th that we marked it and we did something special. So do you remember when you got the basket? Yeah, I remember because first it came in like this huge box and I was just like, what is that? Emily is lactose intolerant, so Aaliyah was happy that the gift group let her customize her basket to fill it with items that were dairy free. She even added a special note to her order. Please make sure that nothing in the gourmet food selection contains dairy. But that's not quite what happened. Oh, so I was reaching through and I'm like, oh, I don't know these things. That's exciting. And then I was like looking and being like, oh, no, actually, I can't eat these things. Aaliyah felt her effort was all for naught when she asked Emily what she thought of the basket. And she kind of reluctantly was like, well, actually, there was, you know, two milk chocolate bars and a box of cookies or something like that. Like quite a few things that she had to re-gift to other people. The mistake seemed pretty obvious to Aaliyah, but not to the gift group when she emailed them to complain. I emailed them on their designated, uh, you know, complaints line or whatever it was. But no, they didn't care. They just, everything was about, like, this is our policies. A policy that said Aaliyah's complaint must be submitted to customer service via email within five days and include photographs. Said, well, actually, I did report it within the five days. So we forwarded them that email again that they'd ignored. And she came back and she said, OK, well, send me pictures. By some miracle, Emily did have a picture of the basket that she took. So I sent that to her. And she said, I can't see what's in that basket. So like, we can't help you. And food items weren't the only thing Aaliyah says the gift group got wrong with her order. Some of the items, you know, there were like, it was like a plant pot and a cutting board and that stuff, but like a lot cutting of the, board. or like a, yeah, there was like a wooden, oh, weird. like plank thing and Definitely a plant Definitely did not pot. order that. Okay. Well. I was pretty pissed off. It made me angry. I'm like, I don't think I'm unreasonable. And it wasn't just a, hey, I wanted the pink one, but you sent me the purple one. Like it was like a dietary health, like she will be in excruciating pain if she eats this item. W5 sent two letters to the gift group asking for an interview. They declined, but emailed saying they contacted Aaliyah and apologized about the error, but the customer did not want a refund, admitting they could have done better. Aaliyah admits she never asked for a refund, but did expect some compensation. I just want you to know that this mistake was made. You know, like here's a coupon or here's a credit or some like gesture to acknowledge that they had made a pretty massive error, right? But that's not all the gift group had to say. They believe that the BBB is a scam, as are all review site companies. There's always going to be companies that, you know, don't like BBB, they don't like our process. Better Business Bureau National Spokesperson Melanie McGovern says when companies ignore that process, it will hurt their publicly displayed grade. If they go and answer the complaint and don't, come back to us with that, or the consumer doesn't get back to us, that complaint's still going to be on our website because we don't have any proof that the complaint was answered. So it would behoove them to use our process to actually improve their letter grade. So you're saying if they haven't actually done anything to, according to your process, it's very likely that uh, F grade is going to remain. Correct. But the gift group isn't only concerned with their letter grade. They say the information on the BBB website is inaccurate. In fact, they suggest some of their complaints are for separate and unrelated companies. But McGovern stands by the gift group listing. By cross-referencing the company's different addresses and phone numbers, the BBB claims there are 50 websites that we have associated with this business. The gift group adds they have improved their service and answered all BBB complaints since September 2023. McGovern says many complaints still remain unanswered. In California, a non-existent sushi restaurant in this Orange County law office got an A- after pranksters paid the Better Business Bureau a $425 fee. The gift group also brought up an ABC News 2020 investigation from 2010 that suggested people could pay the BBB for a better grade. And if the companies didn't pay up... Celebrity chef Wolfgang Puck got an F because he says he refused to pay. Following the 2020 story, the BBB launched their own internal investigation and the CEO of the Los Angeles chapter resigned. In a statement to W5, McGovern said the BBB does not accept payment to fix profiles. 
and paying to join the Better Business Bureau does not factor into a company's BBB rating. But she says there is a surefire way to improve a bad grade. If the company says, I never got these, I'd like to reopen these complaints, and we go back to the consumer and say the company is willing to work on answering your complaint, then that complaint gets reopened. So an F today could move back up tomorrow. Still there. Still there. Wow. Showing is a sponsored ad. That sponsored ad on Google for A-Team Appliance Repair still bothers Laura Snyder. She says she lost $1,000 to the company for a repair that never happened. In fact, many of our complainants say the companies that ultimately disappointed them all started with the Google search. I don't trust anybody anymore. I'm going to be asking questions. Dina Indorato, who almost lost hundreds of dollars to a company called Credit Value, no longer believes anything found in a Google ad. I'm going to be reading reviews. I'm going to make sure that the ad that comes up is not actually a fake ad. And Aaliyah Griffin says Google Ads misled her to think she was looking at different gift basket companies online. I did a lot of Googling. Uh, I checked out a bunch of different companies, though from the sounds of it, they might all be the same company in the end. I did not know that. Google Ads appeared at the top of searches because companies pay them to show their products and services first. Big tobacco are, are in many respects angels compared to these big web platforms. NDP MP Peter Julian recently introduced a bill to crack down on platforms like Google from promoting hate online. So I've, I've just come from tabling just a few moments ago, the Online Algorithm Transparency Act. He'd like to see similar legislation to stop Google from advertising companies that he says scam Canadians. So that's one of the things that brought us to you, which is that when we look at this, so many of the people who felt victimized by these companies were led there by online search engine advertising. We need to ensure that consumers are protected first and foremost because often we're seeing uh, the, the fraud or the scams being publicized on their platforms without the companies doing what are the responsible things and cracking down and ensuring that consumers aren't being ripped off. W5 asked Google what they're doing to ensure consumers aren't being ripped off. In addition to removing Credit Value's account, they said, keeping our users safe and partners safe is our top priority. In fact, in 2022, Google said they removed over 5.2 billion ads, restricted over 4.3 billion ads, and suspended over 6.7 million advertiser accounts. Now, Google will say we do block millions, billions of ads uh, that are scams. What do you make of it when you hear figures like that? Well, for, first off, they make tens of billions of dollars in profits. And, and so the, the reality is that they have enormous resources. Um, they, they can say that they do a certain number, a certain percentage of their ads, but it, it is clearly not adequate. Mm -hmm. Laura thinks Google needs to take more responsibility too after losing her money to an appliance repair company that she found on the search engine. Do you think Google owes you anything here? Yeah, I think Google needs to be more proactive. You know, try to figure out how to stop these kinds of scams before they start. It takes your breath away when you think about all the people that are using these companies and they're just taking your money and they don't have to be held accountable. Nobody has to be held accountable. For a more specific breakdown on what we found in our investigations, go to our website, w5.ctvnews.ca. We'll be back with the last word. Over the last century, there have been countless Canadian prison riots with murder and bloodshed, sit-ins, demonstrations of all kinds. Kingston Penitentiary, 1971. A deadly four-day riot involving more than 500 inmates, including this man who gave W5 a first-hand account of what it was like on the inside. They tied their feet and hands to a chair, and I've even seen them put a tumbler on their head and smash it into their head. And, uh, Even seen a guy take a quaff of another inmate's blood for 
Yeah, it's disgusting. It's even uh, it's, it's too dreamlike to believe it myself. It's, uh, like I say, I've been lived a pretty rough life, but that uh, that softened me up a bit. You can watch that full investigation as well as all of our new investigations on W5's official YouTube channel. I'm Avery Haynes. On behalf of everyone at W5, thanks for watching.